Welcome to dragons, unicorns, and other creative creatures. I am a creative creature with another creative creature. I'm Rona Gottstein, and this is Dr. Kevin. Doctor's in the house. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of loving you. But you know, um, I don't know that we should tell your husband or my husband. Mm -hmm. no, 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 okay. no, no husband telling. No husband Shh. telling. Well, you, you don't tell your husband anything? Not everything. No, a little mystery is good after 20 some odd years of marriage. You think there's a little mystery after 20 something years of marriage? Probably not. I was going to say, <laughs> you like illusion, don't you? Oh, you know, I can, I can lie to myself. Well, there you go. <laughs> hey, what do you think you're doing? Having a soap opera? <laughs> uh, I like soap opera. I love soap opera. I used to watch soap operas with my dad. I could watch the entire ABC lineup, starting with Loving and ending with The Edge of Night. And by the time The Edge of Night came, it was The Edge of Night. No, it was only like. 4.30. Well, in the winter, that's the edge oh, of night. Oh, that's true. That is the edge of night, isn't ah. it? <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, as long as the drama's on the TV screen or in my books, I'm good. It's when it's in my life that I'm, you know. You, dramatic, never. <sighs> drama, drama, drama. Just to, <laughs> <sighs> I don't want it. I don't need it. It's better if I can control it. So we it now, it, you heard it here first. She's a control <laughs> freak. I, you know, I think, I, I wouldn't say all creatives are, I could, because Lord knows it, things go off in directions and characters give you... Heartburn. Oh, God. They give you, you know, information that you had no idea was coming and, uh, you I know, love. something takes a turn you weren't expecting. So it's not as if I feel like I can control my characters, but it's not quite the same as, you know, when there's drama in your life and things aren't going the way they're supposed to or that they think they should or you want them to and... Well, I know I've had an experience at some point, I'm sure you have too, in the middle of writing something and suddenly looking, you know, like you're writing and something comes out about a character and you go, really? Mm. You really needed to do that? Have you, have, so you... Yes, I had a character 70,000 words into a book. I suddenly found out they had a kid. I'm like, what? <laughs> How did you hide this from me? How did I not know this? Yeah, I know. I'm supposed to be the one in control. I'm supposed to be, you know, it's like the cover of... um. The original My Fair Lady soundtrack, uh, Broadway show, yep. which shows um, Rex Harrison, puppeting uh, Julie Andrews, and then George Bernard Shaw as God puppeting Rex Harrison. I'm supposed to be the one up in the clouds who knows everything, all knowing, all seeing, all writing. Yeah, what you, am I you, doing? Something yeah, here? No, you. Well, I can see you're starting to look a little bit more like George. Um, George Bernard, Bernard Shaw. Shaw. Ah, need, ah. No, need another spritz <laughs> of that root control yeah. stuff. That'll help. Okay, so. Moving right along. To what? <laughs> to our today's guest. We oh, have a excellent. guest today. Thank goodness. You know? I'm excited. You're excited? I am. I think it's going to be great. I'm so excited. OK, there we go. That's enough. <laughs> so the arts, <laughs> the arts and artists, and I mean, we started the show a year ago. A little over, yeah. Yeah, a little over a yeah, year it popped ago. Popped up on my, on my Facebook feed. Congratulations on our anniversary. Yep. I'm like, oh my gosh. To support, promote, um, encourage and encourage arts and artists of any and all kinds in uh, in the year we've been here we've had writers and glass blowers we've had jewelry makers costume designers doll clothing designers directors, uh, sculptors directors actors. oh my god yeah well today we have a rare combination of somebody who is an artist in their own right mm -hmm. um, has is a is a visual artist Excellent. Has been a performance artist, but he has also been very involved, a crucial player in the arts in New Hampshire for 30, 40 years, I think. Wow. He is currently an alderman in Nashua, um, and he does a couple of shows over there. He does one about his art called Gidge World, and he does another one called The Art of Politics. Ooh. Which uh, I, at some point we're gonna we're gonna be on. I think it's Gidge World. Oh, goody! And at some point I would love to to go on because uh, we have a mutual friend, Matt Matt Connerton, who's who also know. been here. Yes. Matt's been on. Matt's been a guest host for, on my Web of Light show as well as been on and this he's show. He's been here. Yes. Um, and so I go on to Matt's show every now and then, and I'll do a little bit of the political stuff. So I may actually see if I can get an invitation mm. to the art of politics as well. And so we're introducing none other than Ken Gidge. Ken, welcome. 
Listen, this is really fun. <laughs> I've been watching your show, listening to you guys, and I'm, I hope there wasn't a camera on me because I was just laughing. Just, <laughs> this is really good. And thank you very much. I do appreciate oh, it. Oh, you're very welcome. We do, we have fun, which is one of the other. That was a part of our other goal is to show that this process, as as much as it will make you tear your hair out at times. Um, and make you go gray and all those other things. It's also, it is fun and it needs to be. I think that if you do something like a talk show, especially, and you've been doing talk shows for years, you said that, that uh, uh, was it Gidge World has had like 250 episodes wow. or something, was it? Uh, Seattle Pop Politics and Gidge World and yeah. one other that I can't remember. That's a run. Yeah, because. I'm, I think, about 125 on with Web of Light TV shows, and we're sitting at around close to 70 now, I think. I'm not sure. Maybe well, not that high, 60. Probably yeah. around 60, yeah. So a I'm a little under year. 200 at this point with the two TV shows. That's but, no small feat. But uh, no, It's not. It really isn't. Yeah. It's, it, I don't think people understand that uh, it's, it's, but you have something to say. I mean, the arts are so important. Yeah. And, and it's been uh, a labor of love on a lot of levels, yep. yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, but I, you shouldn't do it if you don't love it. I, I, I do yeah. see some yeah. people that, for whatever reason, will do especially a cable show like this. Mm -hmm. And you can tell. And you're like, not only is it painful for you, it's painful for us. And we uh, can turn it off. Yes. Yes. And you're still yes. stuck there talking. Yes. You ask a question, they answer with one word. That doesn't, yeah, just it, doesn't work. It's you like gotta, interviewing an oil painting yeah, if you're not yeah. careful. <clears throat> I know. We've been pretty lively since day one. Well, you know, it's one of the reasons why, because I had originally come up with this idea, because uh, mm -hmm. I'd had Web of Light for over a year. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the station and I were talking about me doing a second show because I had worked very hard, so I now have, I have gotten Web of Light, so it's picked up on public access channels all the way to California and back. And I did intentionally do what it needed to do to get it out there. So we talked about doing another show, and I came up with dragons and unicorns and other creative creatures, and Rona, who I've known for years, her and I were chatting, and she... I can't remember whether I asked you or you asked me, but it yeah, kind of came... Yeah, I said, was there a co-host involved? Because you were co-hosting for a while with Web of Light, and... And, and you know, I, I think, <clears throat> I don't think people understand, it's art to do this, and when you <laughs> talk about art, you know, they, they're lucky. People are lucky to have this show, it re because you, you guys got it. You have that, that chemistry. We got it! It! With the capital and, I! You know, just like acting or, or anything like that, or anything in the arts. Now, you <clears> started <throat> as an actor, right? Yes. Uh, well, I, uh, in the 60s, which was a long time ago, I went to the Art Institute and I took uh, portrait drawing and I also took um, uh, sculpting. And then I was also going to the Stage One Drama Workshop, which our theater was the Wilbur Theater. That's where we worked. That was our classroom. Oh my gosh. That's right so next that to was Schubert. just incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, and I met a lot of people, interesting people. And uh, uh, then I had to come back to Nashua after my father died and sort of got away from it and got back into, um, well, I got into politics after about so many years. And I, I'm not only an alderman in the city of Nashua, I'm also a state representative of five terms uh, up in Concord. So, and plus I came up with a new form of art, which is 3D, but everybody's doing everything that's 3D, mm. but the problem is is that the stuff I do it's uh, let's put it this way if you are on the internet you wouldn't see this and it's so hard obviously to show it or you know to try to sell it how because, can you do that right. on you know mm -hmm. how can you do it on uh, TV or, or uh, uh, the, the computer you can't so yeah. well you know one of the things is and I love dimensionality in art and I love mm. mixed media you know, and We've I had play some upcycled people who've done some of that work, which has definitely been recycled. Yep. yep. And then we had the interview I did with Yubi, who's an internationally award-winning artist. I was down on Carousel yeah. for my honeymoon, and I got an invitation to meet him and go to his studio and had um, my husband actually taped an interview on my iPhone with Yubi, which we brought back and yeah. we put it yeah. on the on the thing. And he'll do huge pieces. Oh, yes. Yeah, they're enormous. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, like things that are fill up a whole traffic circle and yeah, things yeah, like this yeah, and yeah. and stuff like that. 
So, but you have been very involved with the arts in New Hampshire and the arts, and we are going to have Ken come back on and do a whole show about his 3D arts. Definitely. Um, we may even do uh, something with Ken about some of his uh, theatrical stories because he's got a ton of those. those. Ken has so much to talk about. <laughs> um, but we're going to focus we'll do this show. A month show, of Ken. A month of Ken. <laughs> um, and, uh, but I really want to talk about yes. the condition of arts in New Hampshire. You have some historic stories about where the arts are, where they are now, and what the people of New Hampshire need to know, and even any other state, right. about you know, <clears throat> what they need to do if they'd like to see more arts in their state. So when did you first get involved with the political side of the arts? Well, probably <clears throat> I was always involved politically with the arts, but um, what happened was I was sitting and we were a commerce committee, which is banking and insurance and consumer affairs. You can only imagine insurance and banking when the banks uh, fell. Standing ne uh, sitting next to me was a gentleman, uh, uh, f uh, Fred Rice, representative, uh, and he was a, a, a Republican and I'm a Democrat. And as long as we didn't talk politics, we we're fine. But he said he went to my. He said he went to my. Uh, my, uh, you know, uh, page, and he saw my artwork, and he said, did you know I was, when I was at West Point, I was in a choral group, and he said, well, we traveled around, we were on Ed Sullivan's show twice, you know, oh. if nobody knows Ed Sullivan, oh. it's a long time ago. A really big shoe. Yeah, really, really and, big I, shoe. <clears throat> and, I, and I said to him, I said, you know, what I don't understand is, is that New Hampshire's 45th in the United States for state funding, state arts, I want to know why. We didn't know why. We tried to find out, and then we filed a bill, study the economic impact of the arts and culture in the state of New Hampshire, got it through the House, went into the Senate, and somebody took it. Took no. it where? I'll, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> so uh, he and I are on the committee, and I became one of the chairs. I snuck in on that. Somebody raised their hand and said, we want to know why we're 45th to try to fix it. Raised their hand and said, we want to study studies. Old studies, new studies, and if we had money, we'd do studies. And as a senator sitting, and, and I raised my hand, I said, we're sitting here because we want to know why we're 40, 50 in the United States. We want to fix it. They took a vote, 12 to 2. We got voted off our reservation, just like that. Now, this happens. Uh, it's stealing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you, you can name anything. They, they just stole it. And it was because of one particular person. And uh, we. But you must have been, you, but you said you worked on, on banking and commerce, right? right? So you must have been used to thieves. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what. <laughs> Yikes. What, it, it's true. But what happened to us does happen, but not as blatant. So I'm simply sorry. Be, you start. Be, you try to put something through, and then. Oh wow! We all the way through, right to the right to the, to the committee. What was odd about this is, <clears throat> it happened like real time, and we're both sitting there. Uh, so that's not stealing under our laws. If you vote, you know. Yeah. That's the way it goes. But we said we want to know more about the economy. You guys want to study studies? That's crazy. So. We decided, uh, Fred Rice said, okay, you, you, this has been your thing. Go out, see what you can find. And I went out, and the stuff I found was awful for New Hampshire. It was just one of those things that you just don't believe. So we looked at, uh, now, 45th means, um, if you think about it in a business-wise, if you'll say people coming from California and they wanted to come uh, East Way and, and maybe New Hampshire. Well, arts and culture are very important. So that's a statistic. 45th, I mean, they think we're morons up here. <laughs> and uh, to a degree, we are. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I will laugh a little more. I'm going to think. Well, clearly, the, you know, the, uh, the emphasis wasn't on. That wasn't where money and funds and ah. attention were being directed. Oh, but, but this is interesting. Okay. Uh, so we started looking at the top 25, and we learned why we were 45th. And uh, about six months later, I'm in the presence of the governor. The governor says, I don't understand. He says, my father, he, he gave $600,000 when he was uh, governor. I think he was governor 75. 
uh, $600,000 to the arts, and today I can't. I said, I know why. So the governor, we set up an appointment. Governor didn't show up. Somebody took the notes and says, I can't tell the governor that. <laughs> so last week in front of the house, I stood up and uh, wanted to kill a bill on arts, which, and I said, look, this is what the governor asked me why. And I said, I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> and uh, what happened was the governor, uh, Sununu, first did give $600,000 to the arts. But there were several things. And that was that the arts was a special agency, a separate agency, mm -hmm. a standalone. And also there was a House Caucus Arts Group, which was very powerful. So what he did is he put on his budget, 600000 went to finance, finance it fine, and that was it. Then he made the greatest mistake historically for the arts in the state of New Hampshire. What he did is he took the arts out of an agency and he put it under an umbrella with libraries. Now, you go to finance, finance sits there and they're separate, separate budgets, but they're really not. That's the way they look at it. And they said, what's more important, libraries or arts? Hell with you, they're not getting $600,000. So that was it. So, so all of a sudden, in. Uh, you couldn't communicate with the arts anymore because they didn't have any power. So the uh, arts caucus, uh, House and the Senate, they, they just went away. So this went on for 29 years. And he asked, and I had the answer. And I said, it was your father. <laughs> You're right, it. he doesn't want to hear that. Yeah, no, nobody <laughs> wants to hear that. But as we were doing that, statistically, we found out a lot. For instance, a lot of these, the top 25 states, truly want to bring artists in. So we did, you know, to come to the states. So we did some research to find out how you do it. We didn't have to go far. Lowell, Massachusetts, population of 111,000 people, have 300 studios. Uh, in the city for artists to rent, all mm -hmm. rented, okay, with a waiting list. New Hampshire, we don't have 200. And that statistic right there just went, whoa. We are also uh, probably the state that purchases the least art, meaning citizens. Uh, we have, you know, we obviously have a, you know, big summers with a lot of people coming up here, but our citizens by the least art, also we're the state where uh, the people give least money to the uh, state, in other words, uh, leaving it in the will or, or giving arts to either to the state or, or to uh, communities. And uh, so we find all this out, but it was one other thing. I think this is very important. And by the way, you have to understand that I'm doing the work, Fred is doing the work, and we're in a group that has no interest. <laughs> Yeah. Great. Okay. That's always Well, that's help. too bad. I happen to be one of the chairs, which they were sorry. They put me anyway. Uh -huh. So I would... That's it. No more power for him. Oh, no. So I asked the people on the arts. I says, you know, I got one question. I can't figure it out. He says, if the state gives you a dollar, is there a profit? Is there a, a, a loss? I'm thinking it's a loss. I couldn't answer the question. No one ever asked it. I said, what? No one ever asked it? 29 years? So I go, okay, we want the numbers. I said, no, we're not going to do it. I said, yeah, you are going to do it. Let the official, you're spending taxpayers' money, we want to know. 60 days later, they come and say, $10 for every dollar. In other words, $10 they get, a dollar they get, $10 go back into the treasury. The year before that, they said there was 30. I said, stop, stop, please stop, <laughs> stop. You can verify $10? Three times I asked. Three times I said yes. I said, well, listen to this. We're 45, right? We taught the 46 and 48. They got $700,000 because it was matching funds of 700. That's 1.4. We fell to 47 using your numbers. 700,000, 700,000 right. times 10 is $14 million for 700,000. And I said, you never did the numbers. So that's the information we have in trying to get it out there. And the people who did the studies said, oh, boy, we, gotta, you know, we want that information. And we were willing to give it to them. So what they did is they filed the bill, Economy and the Arts. Hmm. And we, I killed it helpful. in committee, and I killed it on the House floor. Not that I'm for the arts. It's, they've got to go back, you know, like cut the head off the snake so the children can play and do art. 
And so that's where we are. And it's a very, very serious moment. And I'm probably the most hated <laughs> from Democrats uh, to Republicans to everyone. So you're trying to separate it back out again. Well, you, you need, we need money. Mm -hmm. We need standards. I mean, if, if he, the governor changed it back, the first thing we would do is hire a couple of people who understand the economics of the odds. They would verify the numbers. The governor would be the first governor in the United States to get a profit and loss sheet every single year. All right, odds money. All right. He also would hire someone to get real estate people to go out and get places for artists. We're never going to be number one. When we did it, it was Hawaii. You're not going to beat Hawaii. Hawaii is <laughs> going to give so much money, okay? That depends on those volcanoes. But well, yeah, yeah that may be going <laughs> down a little well, bit. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's a new tourist attraction. <laughs> <laughs> Quite but, active. But what we can do is we can be the state in the United States that has the most artists coming here to work. That's what we can do. And we can so, certainly improve it. Yeah, so it's that's amazing a, to realize that Lowell, as one city, has more studio space than New Hampshire has as a state. <laughs> that's kind of... She had a studio in Lowell. I did. I've been uh, there. I know that. Western Avenue. Western Avenue? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah I, I, I was there for over, 30 days with a... Yep. Yeah. Over 300 studios. And then there's some over in the different mills. But to realize that one city had more than... A whole state. A whole state. That's... Yeah. And wow. so when I got to be an alderman, working with the mayor, we, we put up 10 studios. Well, we got to get the financing. We're, and they're going to be open, like... Mm -hmm. So, in other words, people can come in to visit. If the door's open, you talk to the artist. If not, but artists will be there so they work and sell. Mm -hmm. We also started something called a minis, which is basically just a closet where an artist put their stuff. They can come in, pull, take their easels out or whatever they're doing, work outside their little closet, and they're in a place where, guess what? People are coming in, potentially to sell their work. If the minis work, where we've started something new. And also a gallery called the uh, National Area Artists Association. We're changing it. Nothing more than $250. You want to come in and have your lunch? Come on in. You want to sit around with your computer? Sit around with your computer. Uh, they're also going to have daytime artists. Artists brings their stuff in. They can work if they want to, a place to work. That's nice to and be And also so we're close doing TED it. Talks. So that's... Well, uh, sign me up for one. Well, there you go. I, well, you are? You can TED. I can Ted. But that's a lot, and within about six or seven minutes, I told you. So You told us an incredible amount, and I want to yeah. go back on some of it. Now, the new there's a new artist space opening up on Temple, right? Is it on Te Temple, where the old Seedling Cafe was? Where, where are some of these studios? Cause okay, you're, you're, you're correct. On uh, Temple Street, well, it's actually it's at 14 Court Street. It used to be the Arts and Science Center. Okay. Downstairs, and if you look on top as you make the turn, you will see it's like an old fire station. It was. We're right underneath. We've designed 10 studios and three minis. We're waiting for how to work the lease and who gets the rent, or the city will get the rent. When that opens, the 100 yards away will be the gallery opening, so... We got that going, and also there's an art group uh, in the Milliard, which is really terrific. They got about 20 studios, so we're gonna. Nashville's going to be, you know. And you know, you sit here and you you talk about art. Guess what? I'm interested in it too, but there's there's money, and that's the only way you can bring the people who hate, dislike art, dislike <laughs> it, and finance because I can't. And you can bring the artists together because guess what? If, it's, if they verify $8 or $10, that brings us dollar for dollar more money than what the uh, liquor business does. In fact, they come in many times, their bills come in to our uh, committee. And also tourism, that's a bit larger than tourism. Tourism is verified at nine seventy-five. If it was ever verified at 10, it's not going to be, maybe eight, maybe seven. When verified, that means we'll be third largest money maker in the state of New Hampshire. Now, let me ask you, what do you think now? Yeah, do you I mean, look it, at it differently? It makes economic sense. It makes, you know, so many levels of well, I think interest, even if it's beyond the art yeah. itself. Yeah, I mean, and I'm sorry. No, but, no, um, no, no. The, I, <clears throat> one of the things is because I am recently, fairly recently, a Nashua resident. Ah, 
<laughs> I, I live in Nashua now. Um, before that, actually, I was living in Phoenix. But I grew up in the Portsmouth, New Hampshire area. I actually yes. grew up in Kittery, yes. but then I lived off and on yes. through years in Portsmouth. Yes. Uh, no, arts, I mean, like Portsmouth is is, is... is is the light in New Hampshire, yes. As far as the, the, the arts go. And I've watched, the, you know, uh, places... Uh, you have other little art hubs that have opened up all across the state. And they're like these little beacon of, of mm -hmm. light. As this state has gone from a red state to a purple state, New Hampshire's now a purple state. Pretty blended. Yeah, that it's got that blending. But the amount of money that uh, that something like the Muse Festival brings, or right. these festivals, these That's downtown exactly. festivals, they exactly. bring in and uh, and, yeah. and and it isn't exactly. Yeah, there's a huge amount and. We don't have because it's never just about the art. It's also about the food that people eat, and are they going to stay overnight? Well, and that's tax and they, money, right? Yeah, nine cents, you know, you know a dollar, and all the, the places they're they going to buy. The yeah. But you see, if we knew, if the governor would listen to me, we could change everything back. It's difficult, and I'll tell you oh, something. Yeah. I have been in politics. I have told you, commerce. When I first got there, they were fighting about banks. Now it's all about insurance and a hundred other things. Mm. And it's very partisan, Republican, Democrat. But I have never found anything more political than the odds. Nothing. You I would can never have guessed that. Times 10. Nothing. Because why would this one senator, who everybody knows, on that committee that we founded, take it away from us, and then since we found something, wants it, so they file another bill so they can get it, <laughs> and I go, excuse me, use our information. To me, that's plagiarism, okay? <laughs> but why would that happen? Because they want to get reelected. If it's going to be a popular bill, if it's going to make Mega. them look good, they're going to try to take it well, back. Well, so I'm going to make them look real bad. Ooh, and that doesn't it, surprise me somehow. No, <laughs> no, I, I know I am, and I'll tell you what. You stand in front of... 399 people and make statements like this. When a bill uh, is their economy and the odds and kill it simply because it's the same people that for 29 years been doing the same thing and don't want to change. You can only, and I'm an artist. And you're an artist, yeah. as we're both artists. Yes, right. And, so, and the, the joint voices need to be there. Strong. And it's it, it, one of the things that is very disturbing about all of this is how often the people that keep on getting reelected, and I don't say this in any party preference at all. No, I knew you weren't going to, yep. Um, consistently show they do not have anything but getting reelected as their priority. They do not have the people as their priority. They do not make decisions that actually helps their, their, their town and their district oftentimes. It's what can they ride in on and who can they point a finger at. You know, you and said- And they've got no notice of, of the future. I mean, how many of these current students who are artists or want to be artists are gonna choose to stay? They won't, they won't stay. And that's the problem. When you have 300 in a population of 111,000 for artists to eat, rent, come to a state of 1.25 million and have less than 200. And that yeah. includes, you know, Portsmouth. That's yeah. really They're not going to stay. Good. They're going to go other places to create and other places to be inspired. And Yeah. Well, it's not right. It's not, it's, it doesn't have to be that way. No, it doesn't have to be that way. And the, the overall mental, the mental, emotional health of an area is better <clears throat> when there are arts. Oh, there's no, at, no question. No, no. Yeah. That's a, that's a, yeah, no we know, I don't think no, we've ever actually no said it that way in so many words, but it is so true. The, the arts, you know, you, you look at it. I mean, I was at Sister Act. Um, yeah. Actors and singers, they've been around 63 years performing. We're hoping to get them on the show. And you know it's a lot of work to keep a, a, any company running 63 years, let alone but an art company or you know, a performance company. That auditorium was three quarters full. And it's not a small auditorium that we were in. 
and it was the last day of their performance. It wasn't the Saturday night usual big show that you think of as yeah. going to be sold yeah. out. Right, it was um, the Sunday matinee, right? Yeah, but we have theater companies that bring things, and again, I was raised on the seacoast, mm -hmm. so I was raised in Kittery. Mm -hmm. you, you could get the same level of performance artists that go to the Agunkra Playhouse no. to do a stop in Nashua that would bring so much money into this area. Well, we're opening, as you know, $15 million, which will be a performing art center. Now, I've and, I, and I fought, by the way, where's the art gallery? There's no art gallery. I said, what do you mean there's no art gallery? You're getting rid of five arts, so I've been battling. So the mayor's been really nice and let me run this way with the 10 studios. And when that works, and by the way, talk about fighting to get it. Then I find out in the building, there's many spaces open. They tell me you can't do it because of the fire. I says, excuse me, if, if you have a building, and a person has a building, right? Yeah. And, and you know, people move out, people move in. That's not grandfather. Oh, it's not grandfather. I said, yeah, it is grandfather. Oh, no, it's not. Finally, they came down. Well, I'm sorry. You can't do it because you can only use this building for what it was built for. And I said, really? <laughs> it was built for arts and science. So there guess what? I won. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a way to blend that. I mean, I think we've spoken, but the, the Merrimack Regional Theater, in uh, Repertory Theater, rather, in Lowell, for every show they do, they use their lobby for art. And they exactly. tell the, the artists of Western Avenue Studios what the next play is, what its different themes are, and they allow them to submit. That's right. So what we that's right. cross pollinate. Exa exactly, and that's that's what has to be done. So it's so hard for me to be up there and see its money, and I never once told anyone what I thought about the odds, though I'm an artist, and uh, to to try to get it across to them, it's money. The state needs money if arts are third. Ma money maker, you know, a tourism and liquor, arts, and you don't think that's important? You don't think being 44, 45, 47 hurts the state? It does, it does. hurt the state. It absolutely hurts the state. And, you know, and New Hampshire is a state that's been in um, conflict for a long time because I, my, my parents left and moved me into, uh, we moved to Manchester, New Hampshire, where I finished up my high school. So I was back in, in Manchester in the 70s, mm. going to Manchester West, and you know, at that very end, and coming from a place like the Kittery Portsmouth area into Manchester, I thought I had gone back in history. <laughs> well, I, you I, let, me t let me tell you something about Manchester. They wanted our, our committee to be in Manchester. At that point, we got so mad at the, at the chair doing it, we, we threw them out. So here I am at the art school, and by the way, it's an incredible art school in Manchester. At the art school, 40 seat table. And I asked, because everybody knew, not everybody from our committee was there, but there were so many people from the city, from the uh, arts groups, uh, uh, museum, and I asked, I said, did you know that we're 47th in the United States? Everybody goes, you know, for funding the arts. I said, okay, I want to know what the numbers are. And I, they gave me the numbers. And then I did the math. $14 million for 700000 The place exploded. The guy from the, uh, the individual from the art school started talking. Then all of a sudden, an art group starts talking. All of a sudden, the museum wants to get involved with it. All of a sudden, the guy from from the city came over and said, well, the, the, the mayor can give you half the city if you guys want to do it. Two <laughs> half the city. years, go up and take a look at Manchester. It works. Okay. But does anybody listen to us? No. no. You can make them listen. Well, and it's interesting, because when you were talking about like the new Performing Arts Center in Nashua, and Nashua has always, Nashua has been an interesting, you know, because for, for years, growing up in this state, Nashua was kind of just Massachusetts North. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's where we go to avoid taxes. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah Nashua's not really New Hampshire. I mean, I remember hearing that as a kid. Oh, no, really? no, 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 I, I, I've heard that. But I always say Nashua has always put more money into the Treasury than any other city. Uh, that's, yeah, there, and, and there you and go. And so guess what? 
Yeah. It's New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, in some ways, Nashua is the spearhead of what New Hampshire is becoming. Mm. It better be. <laughs> it better be for the odds. I'm, I'm not kidding. Yeah, you. but yeah. Um, but you know, I because th- being a uber creative as you are and as you are, yeah. and we talk about this on the show all the time, uber creatives. Like you, you just can't, don't stop. Yeah, you can't help but be creative. It just you, it, anything you're going to do. But you're talking about the new performance center, and you're mm-hmm. talking about having the you know, the artists doing themes for like for the, the, the lobby, show. right? But you know, w- there would be nothing that would stop as they're bringing a show up and taking a show down, and you always have a dark weekend, you yeah. have a period of time with it, is to, to have like a panel discussion on the arts by artists where, where different arts just do, you know, talk about their art and the art creation and doing the arts and yeah. while their arts are there that could go in and out in a weekend that's dark make money for the artists make money for the center be an educational piece absolutely i mean like there's just so many phenomenal things that could be done that was supporting it and making the young artist in new hampshire go why would i go anywhere else but you've <laughs> got to break the log jam in concord if we want to be looked at as a serious state or the arts, by doing these things, we can go from 47, 44, and push right up into the 30s. And when we do that, in, by getting more money, obviously, because they can see now we're making money, because mm-hmm. that's what it's about. When people start to see that we are the state that's saying, come to the artists, we will help you, we will support you, there will be places here to rent. And that is a lot of work to do, but it's to break up in Concord to let the governor know that it was his father. How, how do we, well, and his father made an honest mistake. I don't think that there was a maliciousness there. Oh, no, no, no. In fact, his mother is an honest. Yeah, uh, it was probably, like, oh, this would be good. Let's put these two and, together, and, and, and then we and, can and, and the oversee mayor, them. By, excuse me, and the governor, by the way, has done murals, his so, sisters. So, you know, I think that the, you know, uh, it, part of it is so important in language, because language is one of my arts that yes, I yes. love. Yes. And, and um, so the language in is, you know, in an act of kindness towards the arts, there was a misplacement that no one foresaw what was going to happen. Absolutely. Things happen. This isn't- You're right, he he didn't have a crystal ball. There's no, you know, there's no blame, there's no bad. This is fixing something that we could not have seen in foresight that we could see in hindsight. But 29 years, nobody asked them if they made any money. Yeah. Yeah, That is shameful. Yeah, it's been long enough. There's no reason. Well, but you know, we have a we have a cultural mythology that say artists are supposed to be poor, and that you know that the struggle. Now, I don't buy in. That I, I mythology, know we don't. We don't buy mythology. that. Yeah. I, we don't buy it in this show at all. No. We're always pushing that. You know, I, I would rather see artists with a fifty million dollar contract than a basketball player. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Or the defense artist. You yeah, know, yeah, but exactly. I mean, you know that. Uh, when you look at it, that what, what inspires and what motivates and what invites people, mm. that we, we have science and math and athleticism, like somehow they're tin gods on some chessboard and everything else falls behind it like it's not as good. And, and that's what we're fighting against. Yeah. And it's a good fight. The thing is, the majority of changes in the world have always been started by artists. Always. Yeah. Always. And guess what? Who do you think lit up the dark ages? That would be us. The and, artists. You know, the and artists, it's, yeah. And you know, let's face it, nobody likes to say, whoops, we made a mistake. But it. But there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, certainly as artists, we say it all the time, too. Yeah, but, Some he, of but, the, but he made a mistake. But politically, they won't let me talk to him. Yeah, exactly. And I he mean, asked you, me the question. It's when you compound the mistake. It's when you can, you know, well, see, it's when you know you've made a mistake and you continue to do it. Then you start really running into problems. But that's when it becomes a mistake. Right. When you see something didn't turn out the way that you thought it was going to, then it's a learning experience. It right. It doesn't become a mistake until you recognize Commit to it, it and you refu- <laughs> refuse to do something about, about it. About it, yes. But this is, at the crux of what you're saying is the problem with our political system that anybody, 
I am I am a taxpaying member of this state. Right, you are. And, and I'll tell you I what. I should be able to talk to the governor no matter what my party you is. You can. Mm. What you do is you call the governor's office. Let the secretary know. Talk to Representative Gidge, as in Gidget, Gidge, simple. You do that, people do that, the governor will call me and we will sit down. All and, right, and, everybody, and you have he, your words. And when he hears this, what happened, he can change it. You don't need, you don't need anything to change it. Yep. We'll yep. bring him the pen. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, uh, we, we, we have people that have done really funky pens. We can bring them a funky pen. I'm happy to do so, absolutely. I'm really artist. We can do, do a quill. <laughs> Um, but it can be done. Now, I've heard some mixed stuff about this Performance Arts Center. There was something, and I want to get it straight from the horse's mouth, because you know a lot more than the scuttlebutt here on the street. Oh, there's yeah. the horse. Yeah, horse. Go ahead. Yeah, yep. Um, so they've passed something, but the Performance Arts Center cannot be built or something until the downtown raises so much money? Uh, Four million dollars. Okay, so explain a little bit about that. Like, what was the thought process? And if the arts are making money, why does they that... They don't know that, though. So Even the mayor of the city doesn't. I said, you give the arts $100,000. I can say you're going to make $5 on every dollar. 100000 500000 great news. Yeah, but great. they don't get it. Well, All they see is the hundred thousand they have to spend now. Oh yes, they don't. They don't. You have to educate everybody. Now you're an alderman and a state rep. Yes. So th there's nothing in this state that says you can't be both. Not there at all. No okay. high. Other than being a little insane. <laughs> Yeah, you but know, that's and an know. artist. Yeah, I was about to say that's a given. We're gonna mm, stick with the insane. Insane an artist, you know, in, in insane. Another stereotype. A, a st insane is so often defined by people who have the illusion of sanity. That's so what I was thinking. Really? Yes. I'm not sure if that's good. Uh, the well, right no, one, is that I good? like it. <laughs> yeah, Write it I mean, down. Who, <laughs> we'll use who it. said who set the standard for sanity? Yes. Yeah. It wasn't an artist. No. Apparently not. <laughs> people, people, I, I, I bet if we, I think we should get your committee that likes to do studies <laughs> to do a study to see if people who define sanity um, are more in need of prunes than people who do not. Ah, I like that. I like we'll that. Can we call it the prune study? Yeah. The I want to call it the prune study. study. All right, we're going to call the governor, though, please. <laughs> Dear governor. People who love the arts that are watching this show and want to do something, what do they do, Ken? It's simple. It's, you have to understand, we're talking money. If you don't like us, it doesn't make any difference. Call the governor, leave a message with the secretary, talk to Representative Gidge, as in Gidget. That's all you have to do. And then Representative Rice and I will go and talk to him. If this changes, it changes everything for the odds of the state of New Hampshire. And I mean everything. And for those of you watching not in New Hampshire and who feel like your state isn't doing what it can, find the representatives who are trying to give this a voice and get your governor to talk to them because this can be done anywhere at any time. Gidge as in Gidge. Now, words, do, yeah. you, do, you, do you know off the top of your head what's the number to call? Oh, I don't. No, well, we I don't. can get it. We can flash it underneath him, right? Oh, oh I'm sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll let what people is, know. What, we is, can... what, is, what, is, what is the number? <laughs> what is the number? Uh, I think I can get it. Oh, my we, God, if, we've turned into a telephone. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is bizarre. So all it's right, just okay. the governor's office in New Hampshire? Yes. And mine's not coming up, so. Office New Hampshire. I did, there we go. There we go. Concord, Main Street, open, close. There should be a phone number here somewhere. Call. I can call this. There it is. There it is. It's 800. Is it? Eight? No, it's 603. 603. It's my angle. And I have to talk to who? The governor's secretary? Just, it, it, you'll, uh, you'll get a receptionist or a, or a secretary and just leave a message. There you go. I want the governor to talk to Representative Gidge. As in Gidge, easier to remember. About arts in. This will change <gasps> every. I'm not kidding you. You probably did more for the arts. You have no idea. When okay, this, everybody, when get breaks, on your phones. When this breaks, it's going to... Okay, so we are wrapping up Dragons and Unicorns and Other Creative Creatures with... Rona Goffstein and... Dr. Kevin and our today's guest, 
Represent Representative, Gidge. alderman, artist, actor, blah, 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 Ken Gidge. Hey. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. And we're going to have you back on to share your art and That's some good. other stuff. We look forward to it. You can also catch Ken Gidge. Uh, he's on National Public Access. He's got Gidge World, and he's got The Art of Politics. So make sure you catch up with him there as well. And if you are a fan of the arts, if you are a fan of the arts and you want to see New Hampshire not be 47th in the world, uh, in the world of arts, you can call the governor's office at 603-271-2121. That's 603-271-2121. And the message is to have Representative Ken Gidge um, have the governor speak to Representative Ken Gidge. We in this show are trying to cut through political BS that a Democrat can't talk to a Republican governor about an issue that affects the whole state. If that doesn't make you slightly nauseous, it should. Namaste.